Well, good afternoon, everyone. I think you already know that we're going to be uh, moving the Obamacare repeal bill in the Senate this week. We anticipate uh, finishing that uh, sometime Thursday. It's important, I think, for the American people to understand that Republicans still stand strong and united against the Obamacare legislation. It's been exactly the disaster we predicted in late 2009 when it first cleared the Senate. Higher co-payments, higher deductibles, higher premiums, lost jobs. It's been a catastrophic, uh, had a catastrophic impact on our economy, and we intend to do everything we can uh, to get rid of it. Obviously, we're not anticipating a presidential uh, signature, but I think the president should have to take credit uh, for the debacle that this legislation has uh, created. This is really about political accountability. If you look at the Obamacare legislation, many of the most onerous provisions don't kick in for years after the bill has actually passed, and of course that was intentional. But I remember, like many of us, uh, voting uh, against the Obamacare legislation on Christmas Eve at 7 a.m. in the morning in 2009 in a purely partisan exercise. But this is what happens when you try to jam through big pieces of legislation on a purely partisan basis. Uh, they don't end up working out too well. And indeed, as the majority leader said, this has been a disaster for the American people. All of the promises the president made in trying to sell Obamacare have proved, proven to be false. Uh, if you like what you have, you can keep it. Premiums would go down for a family of four by $2,500. And that's why, ever since uh, 2008, uh, you've seen the president's political party lose members. Indeed, there's only 30 people who voted for Obamacare still in the United States Senate. They lost the House. They've lost most of the governor's uh, houses across the country as well as legislature because the American people simply don't like uh, this bill, and uh, the president should have known better. We're going to vote to repeal it on uh, Thursday. And, and it's not a question of whether Obamacare or work is working or not. It is not. We know that uh, for a fact. And if you look at the impact that it's had on premiums, uh, the average family's premiums in this, in, in this country have gone up uh, by almost $3,000 since uh, passage of Obamacare. And, uh, you know, what does that mean in the, in, in, in the real world for people? I can tell you, just from personal experience, we've had been contacted by uh, people in my state of South Dakota, one family who saw their health insurance premiums go up by $8,000 this last year. $8,000. I mean, what, what family can survive an $8,000 uh, increase in their daily living expenses? We had a, another constituent who contacted our office who said that their family um, was going to probably pay the penalty and go without health insurance so they could continue to pay their mortgage, buy groceries, and pay their other bills. Uh, that's what hap is happening in the lives of, of uh, ordinary uh, working Americans in this country. And so this has got to change. Something's got to give. Uh, we need a better approach. The president clearly is more concerned about his legacy than he is about uh, hardworking Americans in this country who are feeling the harmful effects of his uh, bad law. But we're going to do everything we can, and we made a commitment to the American people that we would do everything within our power to try and reverse course on this, move in a different direction, a direction that leads to lower costs for the American people, for uh, better access, uh, more affordable health care. And so that's what we're going to do this week. We're going to have that vote. Uh, that vote has been a long time in coming, and we're going to send the president legislation that will repeal uh, this bad law. Well, we are going to vote this week to repeal the health care law. The wheels clearly have come off the law. You're seeing it right now with the costs that are up, co-pays that are up, and so many co-ops have failed. You know, to, to help people that don't have insurance, the president should not have had to hurt so many people who already had insurance. And what many people are finding now is they may have coverage, but they can't get care. The Affordable Care Act is very far from actually being affordable. And it's time for Democrats to work with us to replace this health care law with something that gives people affordable care instead of unusable coverage. Now, on another matter, the president today had a press conference in Paris. He talked about ISIS. You know, he's been talking about ISIS being contained. I was in Afghanistan over Thanksgiving. I will tell you, ISIS is not contained. ISIS is expanding. ISIS has jumped the fence. They're sending out franchises around the world and now have a significant presence 
in Afghanistan. So while the president is at this climate conference, the American people have that as a very, very low priority. They're focused on jobs, the economy, and terrorism. And whatever the president agrees to in Paris is something he's going to have to come and discuss with the United States Senate and bring it to Congress. On, on Obamacare, it hasn't been too many weeks ago that the administration was saying that there would be 20 million people covered through the individual uh, policies, options under Obamacare by the end of next year. Uh, now the Secretary of Health and Human Services is saying, well, really, 10 million, 4 million less than we had last year is a more realistic goal for this year. Now, if this was working, why would that be the case? You have higher costs than families have ever seen before. For the first time ever, the average deductible for health insurance is now over $2,000. And for many individual policies, the average deductible is $5,000 at the bronze level for one person or $10,000 for the family. If you're already paying thousands of dollars for insurance and you've got five or $10,000 you have to pay before you get coverage, for most working families, matter of fact, for most families in America, that's like not having insurance at all. I don't think so. Um, we think it's important to defund Planned Parenthood uh, for all the reasons we've discussed over the last uh, months. And it is a way uh, to uh, put the measure on the president's desk, and that's what we intend to do. Why is there not an inconsistency? It, 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 yeah, that, that it's not inconsistent in any way, in my judgment. The, the health care that Planned Parenthood allegedly provides over and above uh, abortion uh, services are provided by community health centers around the country, dramatically greater number of community health centers around the country. And that's uh, where the funding ought to uh, reside. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, the, the, the whole issue of the omnibus is still kind of a work in progress. And I think the refugee issue uh, is likely to be dealt with in some way in the omnibus. There are a lot of moving parts, as you know. We prefer not to be passing a measure with this many different uh, bills in it. Uh, but because the Democrats here in the Senate refuse to let us pass an individual appropriation bill, that's what we're left with. And so it is complicated, a lot of different bills, a lot of different ideas. We're working our way through them, uh, through the two appropriations committees, and sometime before December the 11th, we'll resolve all that and, uh, and move forward. The reconciliation package uh, that came out of the House from Senators Cruz, Lee, and Rubio, uh, is the Senate going to try to repeal any more of Obamacare than the House did, or is it exactly the same bill? That We're going to have a robust uh, bill through the reconciliation process that repeals Obamacare and expands to some extent the number of things uh, repealed. Uh, we believe it will have broad appeal in the Senate and in the House. Thank you.